is. Hi. Hello, everyone. How are you today? Look, you're still sitting too close. You need to back away, okay? Thank you. I'm Katana, the Lightning Cat. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. You're gonna jump up in my lap, aren't you? Well, go ahead. Uh huh, yeah, go ahead. I didn't realize this was gonna become a cat vlog. Look at her. She's adorable. She's adorable. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> Alright, that's enough for now, okay? I wanted to talk about a. A theory I was forming. It partly comes from a video I made on my previous channel. I think it was titled Mathematic Conceptuals. And in that video, I was talking about a circle having a between zero and infinite or indeterminate number of uh, what was it degrees sometimes the words elude me my basic theory behind that which uh, may become an observation uh, was that a circle of a particular size and you're gonna have to do a, uh, a nice uh, computer graphic image to help you along with it for those of you who can please do so I, I it's a tedious thing for me to try to do with my limited laptop that's 12 years old and um, basically a Walmart POS brand that aside, make a circle, put all 360 degrees on it, and then make a circle that's about three times larger. Put the same number of degrees on it, and then fill the empty spaces with more. <clears throat> make sure all the uh, points where the degrees line up are marked with appropriate sized dots or circles to indicate that that's a point where the degree intersects the uh, outside di diameter of the circle. Make them all the same size, all the points. And on the, the larger circle, make all the points the same size and see how many you can fit in. This is my base part of that idea that a circle is in itself a single point when observed from a great distance away and when you get closer it's actually a circle instead of a point and the, the degrees the circle has is highly dependent upon your observation which is to say that <clears throat> at a small or medium distance from it you can put so many points along the outside perimeter of the circle's diameter but when you get closer and it appears larger you can fit more in basically the circle is between zero and indeterminate number of degrees and it itself is just a point in space And continuing to go out dimensionally, it can be observed or hypothesized or theorized that the circle itself is just a an intersecting segment of a sphere within uh, planes of space, rendering everything that was previously understood about math to be an observation from a very limited individual's perspective or for those of you who want to throw in references of pop culture 
uh, what was it? Michael Guinness's character in Star Wars, Obi Wan Kenobi. He said, "From a certain point of view." So, from a certain point of view, <clears throat> and everyone can have their own point of view. It just grants a different observational perspective on the truth. All math, as we know it, is just a, a very limited observation of the fundamentals of the universe itself. And I'm hypothesizing that a point, a one-dimensional object, or, uh, you know, let's see, let's go with uh, other one-dimensional objects, lines, segments, and rays. A segment, just in space, a one-dimensional segment. You can observe that outside of time, it's just a segment. However, time is the passage of frames over a period of observation. Time is simply momentum and inertia. It's movement. It's not time, it's movement. <clears throat> so, observing from this fourth dimension, it may seem that the segment is just a point in space that is rapidly moving between two other points, thus giving rise to the segment, or the line itself. It's just a single point moving at near infinite speed along a path, or a ray. It's moving back and forth from one point, going outwards infinitely, and then reappearing at the initial point and going back out infinitely. Well, that, that's two different observational perspectives mixed together. It could be that it's moving infinitely outward and then infinitely back at infinite speed, going to one point and then going out infinitely and coming back. Or it could be that it's going from one point, going out infinitely and then reappearing at the point and then going out infinitely again, infinite times at infinite speed. Array line segment just going back and forth or going from point to point and then respawning as it were and going from point to point again and total line which goes on indefinitely it could be going back and forth or it could be going in a circle but due to a uh, the limit of size and scale in observations that line may in fact be a curve in a circle but it's so large, we can only observe it as a line. <clears throat> We're very small creatures. Our point of observation in the universe as a whole is very small. It could be equivalent <clears throat> or equated to that of a single electron or a smaller particle trying to observe a planetary scale with a very limited view, very limited observational cap capabilities. <clears throat> Math is the same way. It's a very all if no variation on something that is exponentially larger. What I would like everyone to do is simply accept my observation as an observation. And I would like greatly to hear everyone else's observation and theories. Now, that's, that covers the first dimension. The second dimension includes width and breadth, or length and width. Depending on what angle you observe the two points from that make the second dimension, which would be a single plane in space, that plane could be a broad area or small area, depending on what point of distance you observe it from. 
And on top of that, that plane could be at any number of angles of observation. That plane could appear as a line, a segment, or a ray from a point of observation when you turn it this way. It would appear as a solid line with no length or breadth or depth to it. It would just appear flat. When you turn it, and it's a plane. So lines, segments, and rays could in fact be planes that we're observing from their side. It's very interesting, isn't it? <clears throat> and it gets more complicated the higher up in dimensions you go. In three dimensions, we have two planes that intersect one another, creating either a sphere or a box or any other dimensional shape. It could be anything from that sphere to uh, the largest one I think I know of is uh, duodecahedron. Yeah. It could be any number of shapes. And the fourth dimension is movement. Inertia and uh, what was that other thing I said? Momentum. It's simply the movement of objects within dimensions. That's the fourth dimension. All other dimensions beneath that one and exceeding that one exist simultaneously within that dimension of movement and the other dimensions they're in. <clears throat> this is my observation. I was just thinking about it while watching uh, Star Trek. I was trying to refine it. Refine my observations to something relatable. It's very interesting, don't you think? At least I do. In the third dimension, we enter into mass, weight, density, volume, the space in between the physical objects as we perceive them. Now, even if you look at it at a molecular scale, a molecule, if you break it down into a single atom, it's just a collection of smaller spheres that are uh, moving at a certain um, frame rate or speed and the space in between them appears to be empty even if you take two, uh, a collection of spheres and put them close to each other you still have empty space between them or what appears to be empty space. And then we get into... Um, what is it? Theoretical physics or quantum physics? When a particle is observed, it's a particle. When it's not observed, it's a wave. Quite honestly, I had thought for quite some time that it's a particle moving in the formation of a wave. Then there was that uh, that research where they made slits into something and f put single electrons in a line straight through the slits and when they observed them they went straight through one slit but not the others and when they didn't observe them it appeared that they acted as a wave and went through all the slits that were made. <clears throat> Very fascinating the way that works. You could hypothesize with that bit of information that it's a particle behaving in the form of a wave or um, a series of curves 
and it's infinitely and simultaneously moving between all those points through a state of I guess uh, either infinite velocity or quantum entanglement as some put it which is why it behaves as both a particle and a wave But that's a hypothesis, not an observation on my part. The observation on my part is the dimensions. The fact that a line segment could in fact be a plane observed from the side instead of the face. It all depends on your perspective and your point of view, where you're observing it from and how you're observing it. That's probably what quantum physics is all about. The state of the observer as it interacts with the event or object being observed. Hey, I would love to hear everyone else's observations and theories. Especially on that circle bit. It depends upon the size and the dimensions of the points along the perimeter of the circle itself, which are basically points or smaller circles, indicating the intersection of the degree along the perimeter of the circle, which could just be a planar segment of a sphere. The sphere in itself could be a three-dimensional object or it could just be a one-dimensional object when observed differently. It's all dependent upon your point of view, your perspective, where you're observing it from and how you're observing it. That's what I understand about math. It's all dependent upon the observer and the equation being observed. So let me know, what's your point of view? Till next time, bye.